Russell Westbrook attended Taylor Swift's fourth concert at the Staples Center two nights ago and posted the following video on IG with the caption, Swift was rocking last night. Stephen A., were you surprised he was at the concert? I'm not surprised about anything with Russell Westbrook because I think to say he's eccentric would be kind. I mean, whether it's the wardrobe or anything else, I mean, that's who he is. But it works for him, and he's a superstar. He gets the right to do that. I'm happy he's happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. He delights in being shockingly different, and I like and respect that. It's his attire. It's his choice of music. It's his shot selection. You just never know what he's going to do because he's going to do what he wants to do, and he doesn't care what you think about what he chooses to do. Now I know he's why. earned it. Yeah. I ain't mad at him. And I'm telling you right now, Russ was making some money off of that, too. Don't yep. be fooled. Brother knows what he's doing. Stephen A., enjoy the concert tonight. No, please. <laughs> Bye, guys. ESPN.com asked a panel of 200 people of vast NBA experience, knowledge, and perspective which teams will experience the most turmoil this season. And the results are in the top five are... Numero uno, the Kings. Number two, the Knicks. Number three, the Lakers, the Mavericks, and the Clippers. Stephen A., which team do you think will have the most turmoil this season? Well, I don't believe that the Clippers should be in the top five. I think they'll be just fine. Um, I would flip the Lakers and put them at number two and the Knicks at number three. Um, in the case of the Sacramento Kings, I would definitely put them number one because George Carl had better find a way to mend fences with... Um, to mark his cousins. He's got to figure out a way to get that relationship steered in the right direction because if he does not, it is going to be a problem for him for a long, long time to come, for as long as he lasts because they're going to get rid of him. They're going to fire George Carl if George Carl doesn't find a way to fix this relationship. DeMarcus Cousins, from a talent perspective, is the best big man in basketball as far as I'm concerned. He is lethal. He's big time. Uh, he's 24 and 12. It's automatic too, no matter what the situation and circumstances are. And he clearly has no trust nor any love for George Call, and he's incapable of hiding it. Somehow, some way, George Call has lost trust from you know his players, particularly Demarcus Cousins, and his M.O. was being able to work with players and to cultivate relationships. Now, obviously, he's somebody that is an exceptional coach. The man knows the game of basketball, X and O's wise, knowing how to utilize guy, put him in the best position to succeed. George Call is one of the best in the business, but particularly in this day and age with these guaranteed contracts, with the exorbitant amount of dollars that are being thrown out there, when there's a problem, the players are not the ones that are going to go someplace in most instances. It is going to be the coach. So somehow, some way, George Call has got to fix that. I would say that the Lakers are a close second because Kobe Bryant is the Black Mamba. Kobe Bryant is a five-time champion. Kobe Bryant, in all possibility, this could potentially be his swan song, even though I'm hearing stuff about him in New York. I'll believe it when I see it. But in the end, what it comes down to is this, Skip Bayless. Kobe Bryant's going to be back. He's going to want to go out with a bang. He's going to be looking to shoot the ball. Uh, he's going to look for guys to step up and produce. And the personalities that they now have on this team, the Louis Williams, the Roy Hibberts, the Brandon Basses of the world, these are not punks. They are not going to back down to Kobe Bryant. And as a result, even though I don't anticipate that there would be problems, there very well could be because those guys are not going to take any stuff from anybody, including a five-time champion who's the face of the franchise. They don't care. And so because of that, you never know the potential for friction that exists there. I would say Sacramento first, Lakers a sure, uh, you know, uh, you know, a close second, the Knicks third because they're they're, they're just dysfunctional by nature, and I, that's all I'm going to say about the New York Knicks today because I'm in Los Angeles and I really, really don't want to depress myself. Speaking of Los Angeles, I cannot tell you how much I disagree with your assessment of the Clippers. You said they wouldn't even be in your top five, right? They'd that's be right. down the list. Yeah. I got them at one. Number one on my wow. list would be the Los Angeles Clippers coached by one Doc Rivers, for whom I have really? immense respect. I think really? Doc is going to be in for a long, hard basketball season that will test him to the max.
test him until even he might feel like he's about to break. Mm. Uh, Stephen A., when you throw Lance Stevenson and Josh Smith into that locker room, onto that bench, into that rotation, and Doc is trying to juggle minutes between those two, and obviously you have a strong-willed personality in Paul Pierce, who's going to command, demand a certain amount of minutes as the new experienced veteran factor on that team. I don't know if Doc, even Doc can pull that off. And then DeAndre Jordan, obviously in the offseason, made his quick decision to go to Dallas. Then he decommitted from Dallas. We all know he went back to the Clippers because Chris Paul finally made peace with him and said all the right, nice things to him that he wanted to hear and had never heard from CP3. I don't know if they make nice all year because Chris is Chris and he's 30 years of age going on 31 and he knows in his heart of hearts it's time. They were up three to one on the Houston Rockets in the conference semis and they blew it. And I, again, I have to heap a lot of that responsibility on Chris Paul even though his numbers in that series still looked CP3-ish. They were still good on paper. I thought in principle on the court he wasn't the leader they needed him to be at that point i expect him to have a big year but i expect this team to to suffer a little bit of the residue of blowing a 3-1 lead could get off to a rocky start and you've got so many strong wills so many outspoken personalities in that locker room i i don't know i i think you've got a volatile mix there and i and i look you went to the obvious one in sacramento George and DeMarcus, I like the heck out of both of them, frankly, and they have clashed publicly. I'm, I'm wondering if they've clashed so much publicly, it's so out there, that it will help them clear their air a little bit to where they'll at least coexist this year. And plus, DeMarcus, yeah, DeMarcus I, I Cousins, a, he's oh. a different kind of, he's a different I, I kind of cat. I, I know him. I know he's him. a different kind of cat. I love his game. I think he's big time. He's Again, big I think time. he's the best big man in the yeah, game. I, I think they concur. would have been asinine to trade him. I don't think you let him go. You deal with him. Uh, but the thing about it is for George Carl to get there and literally to be there for just a minute and talk about trading him or allow those rumors to That's get out George. there. That you can't do that. You just you got to know that this is a different this is a different animal you're dealing with here. You can't do that to Demarcus Cousins. You can't do that. Well, and so because of it, I, I just I just consider it to be volatile. I don't. I know you sit there and say the Clippers, and yeah, the potential is there, but I just have so much faith in Doc Rivers as a leader, and I think the whole fiasco involving DeAndre Jordan helps them immensely because a lot of the stuff that was being internalized no, I know. got out and because it got out and they realized what almost happened to them I think CP3 is going to be a better and even better teammate I think Blake Griffin deserves a lot of credit because if you notice no one really had a problem with Blake Griffin and so because of that I think he also assisted in bringing guys together Paul Pierce is there now he's a champion and he's a leader. Give credit where credit is due. I think you look at that, the fact that you added Paul Pierce to that locker room, and Paul Pierce was in Houston at DeAndre Jordan's house when all of that was going down too. The fact that all of that happened, I think the combination of Doc Rivers, Chris Paul, and Paul Pierce as your leaders with Blake Griffin. I'm gonna give Blake Griffin some love here because he's a big time player and to be quite honest with you, he's a little bit sensitive and all of that stuff, but he's a good person. He's a good person. I think that when you look at it from that perspective, I think they'll ultimately be fine. In Sacramento, that's a different animal. And in Los Angeles, with Kobe's last season approaching, it could get very, very interesting. It really could. I didn't anticipate those two teams. Very interesting. I'm on record, and I'm gentlemen. not backing off that. Okay. We got you. Lack of faith in Doc Rivers, kid. Mm -mm. More first take after the break. Keep it here.